Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to work on number eight on the FTC General Knowledge Practice Test. This is a practice test for teachers in Florida that are getting ready for their certification exams. This is a really good problem um, reviewing some of the core math concepts in algebra. Today we're going to look at inequalities in algebraic equations. So if you're a teacher in another state, you can use this to get review of inequalities and algebraic equations, and it will help you on your teacher certification exam. Let's start. It says, if 2, and then parentheses, b plus 1, and then it has this symbol here, minus 6, then, and it has these answer choices, and all of them lead with the letter b. What the heck does that mean? Well, here we have an algebraic equation using inequalities. And I think I'm going to just take a quick moment and talk about equations, algebraic equations, and algebraic inequalities. Um, if we were just dealing with 2 plus 1 and just had that, if it was just 2 plus 1, we actually call this right here, this little thing right here, an expression. And if I wanted to make an, an algebraic expression, expression, I could do b plus 1, and we'd have an algebraic expression. The only difference is an algebraic expression uses a combination of variables and constants. Now if I want to turn this first one into an equation, I just do 2 plus 1 equals 3. There we have an equation. The equal sign makes two values equal, an equation. Well if I want to make this an algebraic equation, I just add, uh, I could just add an equal sign here. And now we have an algebraic equation that we could solve for b. An algebraic equation, just like an expression, has a combination of variables, the b, and a constant, like the 1 and the 3, except now we're using the equal sign, so it becomes an algebraic equation. Um, and an inequality is going to be very, very similar. Um, it's an algebraic inequality, so it's um, 1 plus b plus 1, and then we're going to do less than, let's say, negative 6. Well, here we have this inequality element, but we, we could solve it the same way if we're trying to solve for b, minus 1 on both sides, and then we'd have b is minus 6 minus 1, negative 6 minus a negative 1, we're going to get a negative 7. Now we have to deal with what this inequality means and how we interpret it. So let's just say if you ever had something like this, x is less than 1, what does that mean? Well, um, the inequality, the larger side always faces the larger number. So this, the open side I think of it like a Pac-Man. The Pac-Man's going for the bigger number. So we could think of this as 1 is greater than x, or you want to think of it as x is less than 1. And the arrow here is facing the smaller number. So when you see this, you could read it as x is less than 1. And if we were to write this on a number line, with 0 being here and 1 being here, x would be all the values, all your values on this number line, that are less than 1 not including 1, all values less than 1. If it was something like this, then it means x could be all values that are less than or equal to 1, which means you'd have, you would have a filled in on, um, number line like that, meaning it could be 1 or values less than 1. And if it, was, if it read like this, x is greater than or equal to 1, that would look a little different. That would be like Oops, that would be like uh, this right here. It could be 1, and it could be any value that is greater than or equal to 1. All right? Okay. So let's just solve this problem. How about it? Okay? We have 2 times a quantity of b plus 1 is less than negative 6. I'm going to divide both terms by 2, keeping this algebraic equation equal or the algebraic inequality equal, these cancel out. I get b plus 1 is less than, what's negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3. Now I'm going to solve this algebraic inequality by minus, minusing 1 on both sides, and you get b is less than negative 4. Algebraic inequalities are very, very similar to algebraic um, equations. You're going to follow the same rules. You just have to make sure that you um, keep this um, the same throughout. 
The only time you flip the inequality, the only time you do things like that is, let's say, if this is a negative 2 and you were dividing both sides by a negative value, then in that situation you would flip the inequality. So if it was less than, it would go to greater than, it would flip. Um, that's something that happens only when you're dividing both sides by a negative value. Otherwise, the inequality is going to um, behave exactly the same as a equation. So you could almost in your mind imagine that this is an algebraic equation and solve for b. And if you ever had to graph this, well, my final answer is b is less than negative 4. What does that look like? Well, just real, a real quick sketch. There's my 0. That's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. This means that b is less than negative 4. So it's remember, it's all values that are less than negative 4. So anything in that area there would work, like negative 5 or anything you know, but um, less than negative 4. Okay, team, I hope you found this video helpful as a good review of inequalities and you know how to solve algebraic equation and algebraic inequalities. This is a great problem. Definitely uh, study it. Uh, use it to help you on your math uh, teacher certification exams. If you have any additional questions, you can go to a Go, the Go Math website or you can sign up for one of the Go Math uh, workshops. We're doing a whole bunch of new workshops in Florida for the FTCs as well as the MTELs in Massachusetts. So you can check those out if you live in Florida or Massachusetts or you can uh, contact Go Math if you need some help and would like to work with a teacher with some math concepts for your teacher certification exam. All right, team. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hi, team. I want to encourage all teachers that need some extra help on the math to check out one of the Go Math workshops. We're holding them in Massachusetts and in Florida to help teachers uh, get ready for the teacher certification exams. Check it out. I'm sure you'll find it very helpful. Thank you.